He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to Hope Lutheran Church, Palm Desert, California, where everyone is welcome, and that includes you. Look who I have beside me today. Gisa, you have a new title. I do. What's happening? Ministry pastor. And what is that in terms? Hope, uh, Hope uh, officially licensed me. I finished my seminary degree several years back and have been on staff for quite a few years. And uh, now I'm officially uh, licensed as a pastor here at Hope. And my new title is ministry pastor. That's great. And we're so glad to have you aboard. And Thank with you. your new title. I'm and super also, excited. Last Sunday was Easter. Over 1,500 people worshiped here at Hope Lutheran Church. And so let's take a look at what, what they saw. Yes, it was an amazing Sunday. So we're thankful that you're a part of it. But if you also want to participate in what's going on in Hope through giving, we would love for you to do that. And we have three ways to do that. The first one is... You can text to give at 84321. Yes, you can go on our website at hopepd.org and click on the Give button or... Or you can mail your gift to Hope Lutheran Church, 45900 Portola Avenue, Palm Desert, California, 92260. All right. Well, now, what's what are we doing now? Oh, what do we do next? Well, don't forget to, to hit that subscribe button down at the bottom of the page. And we'd love to have you a part of our ministry. And check us out because something's happening all the time at Hope Lutheran Church. So let's go, Gisa. Let's get into the message. All right. The good news for today comes from John chapter 20. Glory to you, O Lord. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they're forgiven them. If you retain sins of any, they're retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin, one of the twelve, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the mark on the nails in his hands and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his sides, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, my Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have to come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. 
But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The good news of our Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this day, for this beautiful day, and thank you for your words. And allow us now to open our hearts and our minds so that we can receive what you have for us through your words. And we pray for all of this in your precious name, Jesus' name. Amen. Fear. We all know what that feels like. We have experienced situations that caused us to react, that created a heightening sense of senses like increased heart rate, sweating, trembling, and a sense of impending danger or unease, and even thoughts of needing to protect ourselves, to avoid the source of fear, or even have to get away from that situation altogether. I'm going to share 10 of the most common fears people have, and most of us probably have experienced at least one of them. Listen to these and see if you have any of those. There are public speaking, death, spiders, darkness, height, people or social situations, flying, open spaces, thunder and lightning, confined spaces. Do you relate to any of these fears? For me, it's height. I'm afraid of heights. Not in all situations, but definitely can't get close to a cliff or walk along a ridge line that's too narrow with a steep drop off in one or even both directions. And thunder and lightning? I grew up in Germany where thunderstorms are very common, but since I've been living in California and don't experience them anymore on a regular basis, they scare me. And of course there are other fears like the state of our country or our world, politically or environmentally, human rights. We have an election coming. All those things can cause fear that feels very real to us. And some of it is real, but often what causes us fear may also not be real. But rather it's just a perceived thing by us in a way that causes us to experience fear. Like, have you ever feared that God wouldn't come through for you? That God is far from you or doesn't really care about your needs? And what happens when we don't manage our fears, real or unreal, in a healthy way? They can haunt us, fill us with an unmanageable amount of anxiety that can paralyze us to a point that we stop living and start hiding in fear. Today's story is an example of fear experienced by the disciples, the people who are the closest of Jesus right after he's been crucified. They've come back to the house they're staying at. They're still exhausted from the events of the crucifixion three days before, and then today has added even more confusion because they've been to the tomb and discovered that Jesus' body is missing. I mean, how much worse can it get? But then Mary Magdalene shows up and brings the news that she's seen the Lord and that he's alive and shares with them the words Jesus had said to her. The tension, though, still just keeps building. The disciples are afraid of the Jewish leaders who were responsible for Jesus' crucifixion that they may be looking for them next. And now that the disciples heard that Jesus is alive, it's getting even trickier. What if the Jewish leaders get word that Jesus is alive? They for sure will be coming after the disciples, believing that they'll know what it means that Jesus is alive and where they can find him. They've lost all sense of peace, all ability to calm themselves, overwhelmed with fear that Jesus is dead and still not believing that he could possibly have risen from the tomb, feeling that God has forgotten about them. What do you do when you feel a sense of anxiety, a sense of fear building up inside of you? Do you have any coping mechanisms in place to keep you from reacting and allowing these feelings to overwhelm you? One thing I do is I close my eyes and I take a deep breath in. Sometimes one, two, or three, or maybe even ten, just slowly breathing in, and breathing out, focusing my mind on feeling the anxiety leaving my body. Is there maybe something going on in your life right now that makes you feel anxious or fearful? Or are you maybe feeling that way and you don't even know why? 
If you are, if you're not, either way, I want you to sit back and practice this with me right now. So please close your eyes, relax your body, your shoulders, and take a deep breath. Then breathe out very slowly. Very good. Now let's do that one more time. Close your eyes. Breathe in. Breathe out. Feel the difference? Maybe? Yes? No? Well, I encourage you to practice this at home. Yeah, because I definitely, I'm definitely sure that it would have helped the disciples to encourage each other to use any or such simple skill to at least release some of the fear they are experiencing while they're all together in that house, probably over-focused on the events that happen and their fear the Jewish leader may, leaders may be coming after them. But instead of looking for ways to release their fears, they lock themselves along with their fears in inside that house. It says in the text, they lock the doors. And I mean, not just one door, but doors. So multiple ones. On a usual night when my husband and I go to bed, I always walk back to the front door and check and make sure it's locked. But when my husband is traveling and I'm alone at my home, I walk around the house and check all doors, patio sliders, and I even check behind the shower curtains. I actually feel silly every time I do this. And Honestly, don't even know if I ever admitted this to my husband, but I, I guess he, he knows now, right? Because all I'm doing is entertaining unjustified fear. But here's the good news. God knows. God knows our needs and our fears. And God knows that the disciples need what they need in their situation. So he sends Jesus and Jesus enters the house even though the doors are locked. Not saying he wasn't in a real human body, but meaning that Jesus is able to come through any door, that Jesus can enter into any space we're in where he knows we need his presence. And that is what he's doing for the disciples. He enters into the house and stands among them and says, peace be with you. Stop being afraid. Stop being confused. Stop thinking you've been forgotten. This phrase, peace be with you, was and still is common, a common everyday greeting in the Middle East. But like Jesus did with so many things, he takes something that is common and gives it an, an uncommon meaning. Peace be with you becomes a reminder to the disciples that in spite of the crucifixion and the tension and everything that's happening, they don't have to live in fear. Jesus is giving them this message so they can become the messenger to share with others that no matter what the world around us looks like, we can believe in Jesus' presence and find peace in him. We just celebrated Easter and heard the story of how Jesus seeks us, that he pursues us and even in the midst of our fears, our brokenness, our failures, our sins, shows up for us by giving him his life and coming back to life. The disciples lock themselves in even though they hear Jesus is alive. They don't go looking for him, but Jesus seeks them out and says to them, just like he still says to us today, Peace be with you. And in addition, Jesus takes it even a step farther and shows the disciples grace when they don't believe that he has risen from the dead and, and even hide behind closed doors. He shows them proof that it is really him by showing them the wounds in his hands and his side. Jesus was like, what else do you need to hear or see so you can believe and find peace? What else can I do so you can see and trust that what I have said is true, that my love for you is real now and forever? And then he says it to them one more time, peace be with you. He wants to make sure he has their attention as he's about to show them what it will look like to live and share the true peace of Christ. Jesus then breathes on the disciples for them to receive the Holy Spirit and now they're ready to go out to offer and share Jesus' forgiveness with others, the one thing that will bring the ultimate peace. 
It's forgiveness that will begin to release real and unreal fears, resentments, anger, insecurities, any emotions that will keep us from experiencing the peace we can only find in Jesus Christ. So next time that sense of fear overcomes you and you're about to go around and lock the doors of life, slow down enough to take a deep breath. But don't only take a deep breath of air, but ask Jesus, ask Jesus to breathe on you so you can breathe in the breath of Jesus Christ. The breath that awakens the Holy Spirit inside of you and helps you access the peace that overcomes all of our own understanding. The peace that opens doors for us to love where it is hard to love, to receive grace when it is hard to receive grace, and offer forgiveness when it feels impossible to forgive. So you can experience the fullness of the peace of Jesus Christ breathed into you. So today, May the peace of Christ be with you. Amen. Let's pray. Dear God, thank you for this reminder that it is your peace that we need, that we need you to breathe on us, that we can breathe in your breath of peace. And then in return, go out and share the good news about you being alive with everyone around us. And for all of this, I pray in your precious name, Jesus. Amen. And now let's all enjoy this song together. Thank you, Pastor Gisa, for the inspiring message. This will be the first Sunday of the month we celebrate Holy Communion, and let us start by confessing our faith in the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe in God the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. 
He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now let us celebrate the Lord's Supper. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. And after he supped, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink ye all of it. This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Let us pray together the prayer our Lord taught us. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. This is the body of Christ given for you. This is the blood of Christ shed for you. The body of our Lord Jesus Christ and his most holy and precious blood given and shed for you. May God guide and bless your every footstep until life's everlasting. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Now receive the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and grant to you his peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. He has risen. He has risen indeed. Alleluia.